If you don't know how to do breadth-first search in a binary tree, you will probably fail that coding interview. But don't worry, by the end of this video you will understand how to solve this common problem and why trees are an important data structure in software engineering. This post here went pretty viral on X, where the author claims that 90% of computer science students can solve this pretty simple data structure problems. The problem is, given a binary tree, print each level of a tree on a separate line. The example uses a binary tree with three levels and six nodes and it gives an example output. Now if you never worked with binary trees or trees in general, you will probably find this problem somewhat difficult, but once you understand some basics, the idea here is actually incredibly simple. So let's go to the drawing board and discuss how we could solve this type of problem. So let me draw the same tree from the example. We had one root node with two children, and then one of the nodes has one children and the other one has two children. And then let me draw the connections between these nodes real quick. So our root node has two child nodes, the left node on the second level has one child, and the right node on the second level has two child nodes. Some common terminology that you will hear when working with trees is nodes, which can contain some data. In this example, we're just holding some numbers, and each node can have child nodes. Now, in a binary tree, which is a special type of tree, you can only have a left child and a right child. In a general tree, you could have more children nodes. The first node in a tree is called the root, and the bottom nodes are called the leaves. So this is our binary tree, and we are supposed to print each level of the tree in a separate line in the console. So you have to think about each level as a separate component that we have to process, and the only thing you have access to is the root node at the start of the program. So essentially, we want to start from here and then move on to the nodes going level by level. And when we are done with a given level, we proceed to the next level and then process all of the nodes on that level. This is also called breadth first search because we are traversing the width of the tree first and processing all of the available nodes before we move on to the next level of the tree. Now, essentially, what we are going to do here is process the first node then the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and then the sixth one. Now this might seem redundant, but this should give you some idea of how you can solve this type of problem. Is there a data structure that allows you to add elements from the left to the right, but process them from the left side? If you think about it, this could be solved with a queue. This is a first in, first out data structure, where I'm going to add the root node as the first element, and then process that. In our case, we're just going to print this to the console. And then we're going to process the second and third node, and then the remaining nodes on the last level. And we can continue applying this until we have processed the entire tree. Now, how do we actually translate this into c -sharp code? We have to start by defining our data type, which is going to represent our tree. And I'm just going to create a record called a node. Now, this node is going to have some value. And because we have a binary tree, we can have a left child, and a right child. Leaf nodes don't have any children, so these values can be null. And this is a simple way how we can define a tree structure. Now, how do we actually initialize a tree? So let me get rid of this hello world statement. And then let's initialize my root element, which is just going to be a new node. So based on the problem statement, the value here should be one. And then we can define our left child node. So this is just another node. The value here is going to be Two. This node has just one child element with the value of four. Keep in mind our tree data structure. Now this is a leaf node and it doesn't have any children. So I'm going to allow this to have default values, which are just going to be null in this case. And now I can move on to the second node, which is the right child of our root with the value of three. And this node has two child nodes with the values of five and six. So I need to initialize two more nodes. So this is our data structure. Now, how do I actually traverse this going level by level? Well, I need a queue, and this is just going to be a queue containing nodes. Let's call this the queue. And then the first step is going to be to enqueue the root element. This is how we start the algorithm. So we just enqueue the root. And then what we want to do is to keep processing the queue while there are any elements inside. So as long as the queue count is greater than zero, we want to do something. So what do we want to do? We want to dequeue a node from the start. So we call the dequeue method, 
and this is going to give us the first element that we appended to the queue. And let's just write this value to the console, and I'm going to write it with one space in front. And if we leave it like this, we're only going to process the root element. So what do we want to do next? Let's say if the left child of the current node is not null, then we're just going to enqueue this child element. So we want to enqueue the current left child. And let's do the same for the right child element. So if the current node's right child is not null, then we're going to enqueue the right child. So if I execute this code, here's what we are going to get. You will see that this prints out all of the nodes that we have in the correct order in a new line. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we are definitely processing the elements in the correct order. Now, instead of doing a right line here, I just want to write the elements, and now I'm going to get the same output with the elements in the same row. So the next problem I need to solve is how do I actually split these into different lines so that each level is on its own line? There are a few ways of how you could solve this, and I think the most elegant approach is to simply keep track of the current level. So I'm going to update what we are storing in the queue to be a tuple, where the first element is the current node, and there is an integer value representing the level of the current node. So by default, I'm going to enqueue the root node at the level one. But I will also need a helper variable to keep track of the current level. And we're going to use this value to figure out when it's time to print a new line. So now when I dequeue an element, I'm going to get the current node and the level of that node. And what I want to do is before I print the value, I want to check if the current level is less than the level of this node. And if this evaluates to true, it means that we have moved on to the next level in the tree. So what I'm going to do is just say console right line, and we are going to increment the current level by one. So then I can proceed to print the current value. And now I just need to enqueue these values with the correct level, which is just the level of the node that we are processing right now, plus one. So let's also do that for the right child. And now I'm going to start the program and add a breakpoint here so that we can take a look at what a single iteration looks like. So we're going to dequeue our first element. Now, if I take a look at the current node's value, you can see that the value is one. So this is our root node and it contains two child nodes. Now the current level is one and the level of the node that we are processing right now is also one. So we are still on the same level and there is no need to print a new line. So now we're going to process the value of this node. And at this point, the queue is empty. So now we're going to enqueue the left child and the right child. And after doing that, the queue will have two child nodes. So we're going to process the next node. And here you can see that the current level is one and the level of the node that we are looking at is two. So we have encountered a new level and we're going to print a new line. So let me hit continue. And of course, I'm going to remove the breakpoint. And when I take a look at the output in the console, you can see that we are getting the correct output. So now we are printing each level of the tree in a separate line. If I were to draw this again, here's what we would have. So we're going to start with an empty queue. Let's say this is an empty queue. And we start processing from the first node and we just append it to the queue. So there's nothing in the queue now. And we can go ahead and process this node and append its child nodes, which are the values of two and three. So in our next iteration, we have only two and three in the queue. So now we go ahead and process the second node and we append its children. So this is just going to be four. In the next iteration, we have three and four in our queue. We go ahead and process three and then we append its children, which are five and six. In the next iteration, we have four and five and six in our queue, and we go ahead and process four. It doesn't have any children. And in the next iterations, we process the elements five and six, which also don't contain child nodes. And when our queue is empty, our bread first search is complete. Now going back to our code, if I were to update this to be more complex, let's say that our tree should contain more elements. So now both nodes on the second level have two child nodes with these values here. And then let's also add another set of child nodes, which are going to be eight, nine, 10, 11, and then 12, 13, 14, and 15. So if I go ahead and run the program, you will see that we get the correct output 
we have one and then two and three and then four, five, six and seven and then the remaining leaf nodes in the last level. So it doesn't matter how big our tree is, the breadth first search is going to still work the same. There is another approach which is called depth first search where you start from the root element and you keep on processing its child nodes until you encounter the leftmost leaf node. And when you reach the end of the tree on that side, you keep traversing back up to the root until you encounter the first child that you can visit next, which in this case is going to lead us back to the root. And then we're going to visit the next child, its left child, and then go back to this level before visiting the last node and essentially completing our iteration. Now a common way how you could implement depth first search is using recursion and I'm going to leave this as an exercise for you. Let me know in the comments if I should do more videos about data structures and algorithms. Here's a video about binary search that I recommend that you watch next. Check out my courses to improve your software architecture skills and until next time stay awesome.